Sometimes you'll try to warn people about a one world government. You'll try to warn them about some of the trends that we see happening of going to a cashless society. There are so many Christians who, when you talk to Christians about a one world government or when you talk to them about a, you know, a cashless society and all these different checkpoints that are being set up and the, the police state, you know, they call you a conspiracy theorist. And I'm sure you've been called a conspiracy theorist through the years. But can, can someone really be a Bible-believing Christian and deny that there's going to be a one-world government someday? I don't think you can read the Bible uh, without seeing the fact that it's always been Satan's plan to rule the world like Pinky and the Brain, and he wants a one-world government. He wants to be God. When this man is ruling the entire world, basically he will command that everyone receive what's called the Mark of the Beast. Who's ever heard of the Mark of the Beast? And the mark of the beast is going to be something, the Bible says, in your right hand or in your forehead, and that no one will be able to buy or sell without having this mark. Now, people might have read this a few hundred years ago and said, you know, how can you do that? How can you make people not be able to buy or sell unless they have this mark? Can't we just pull out cash? Think about the way the technology is. This money that I hold in my hand, this Federal Reserve note, it's a piece of paper. It's worthless. It does not have any intrinsic value. When you see a cashless society starting to develop, more and more we're getting away from using cash. There will be a time when physical money is just going to cease to exist. So is paper money a relic of a bygone era? 95% of the transactions in America or more are now have nothing to do with physical pieces of paper or coins. Have you ever wondered if one day cold, hard cash will simply cease to exist? It's a reality that some say that we should accept. Greenbacks and coins have become an inconvenience. The principle is that we have to move this economy from a cash-based economy to a cashless economy. This involves the banks, it involves the telecoms companies, it involves providers of ATMs and POSs. It involves a cultural change. Just what do you call money these days? Is it a handful of coins and notes? Or are cards taking over? And are some forms of money coming to the end of their lives, like the cheque? Suppose every store in your town said, hey, we're not taking cash anymore. Well, suppose they said, hey, we're not even going to take, take checks or credit cards because there's too much fraud, too many stolen credit cards, too many bounce checks. It has to be electronic transaction. Because let's face it, the paper money's not really worth anything anyway. It's a piece of paper. Might as well be monopoly money. It's not gold, it's not silver, it has no intrinsic value. So first, they've gotten us used to using pieces of paper that are worthless as money. Today, I can exchange that piece of paper for goods and services. But if somebody said tomorrow, that money's not worth anything, it wouldn't be worth anything. Because you remember the Confederate States of America? Remember the Confederate money? People saved up Confederate money in the mattress. Guess what? It wasn't worth anything. So well, they could do that to you too and just say, well, your paper money's no good. Now it's all just in your account. It's all tied in with your Facebook and your YouTube channel and your Gmail. And it's great because there's no identity theft. You don't have to worry about leaving your wallet at home. You don't have to worry about your credit card being stolen. It's all just completely cashless. We can control the drugs because there won't be any way to have a cash transaction. It's to prevent crime. It's sci-fi technology that's about to enter the checkout lane, all in the name of... Speed and convenience. You'll be able to buy anything from bread to beer if you agree to give the store your ultimate identity. It scares the heck out of me. Once you have your grocery scanned, now what do you do? Touch your index finger to the image reader and you've paid in about three seconds all with the touch of your fingertip. It's called biometrics, an automated way to recognize you based on your unique biological characteristics. Do not be sold on this because of a convenience. You know, today it's a fingerprint, tomorrow it, a microchip, maybe that ushers in the mark of the beast. Donnie Attaway quit his management job at Quick Trip when the convenience store chain told him he had to swipe his finger to clock in and clock out. And although it may be optional today, you know, who knows about tomorrow. Experts say biometrics are about to pervade every aspect of our economy and daily lives. And you put your finger in there, and my name comes up, and she's got all my information. And it's that quick? It's very quick. Love it? Love it. People across the world already use biometrics. The U.S. government, the airlines, gas stations, even Walt Disney World uses technology that can read guest blood veins in lieu of carrying day passes. This one world government is going to have so much power 
that it's going to be able to dictate that no person on this earth will be able to buy or sell without having the mark of the beast. That's interesting. The King James Bible very clearly says that the mark of the beast, this mark that will be required for you to buy or sell, will be located in their right hand or in their forehead. This could be some kind of an implantable chip where in order to buy or sell, you're just going to need to scan this chip. What's going to happen one day is that they will say, this paper money, that $100 in your pocket, it's worthless. You must scan to pay. It's all electronic now. Now you go to the grocery store, you ring up your groceries and then just and if you don't have a hand, no problem, because we'll put it in your head, because everybody has a head. You know what I mean? And you'll just, you know, you know, check out at the checkout. And so it'll just, all the money will just be electronic format. And it's already going that way. You know, cell phones are starting to have a scanner. So it could be basically, let's say there's an exchange of goods and services between two people, right? Okay, um, that's gonna be $10.50. Go ahead and show, give me your right hand so I can just scan it with my smartphone. Okay, now I just took the money from his account. Oh, you just gave my son a piano lesson. Let me get you paid. Think about it now. The smartphone can be used to scan the mark of the beast, okay? And you can't buy or sell without it. In medical news tonight, a chip the size of a grain of rice could save your life. The year is 2017. You're rushed to a hospital, unconscious with no ID or medical history, but thanks to a microchip under your skin, it's all there. Science fiction 20 years ago, but a biometric reality today. I think it is possible to free us completely of our wallets and keys using biometric technology, if that's what people want in 10 years' time. The challenge is to safeguard our privacy in a brave new world. New microchip technology now makes it possible for the emergency room staff to find out about your medical history at the touch of a computer key. So many emergency physicians have to operate blind. We have to make medical decisions not knowing what medicines you take or what allergies you have. Harvard doctor John Halopka says this radio frequency identification chip may solve that problem. He had it implanted in his right upper arm. A scanner reads an identification number. Those 16 digits are then entered into a secure website where his medical history is stored. EMT worker Brian Orsati says the chip could help emergency workers. One of the big things is if you ever have some type of trauma patient where they come in and they're unable to give you their information and or their medical history. Dr. Halamka says the benefits are clear. I'm a rock climber and I believe that if I fall off a cliff and you find me unconscious, the comfort of being able to scan me and figure out who I am outweighs my concern for privacy. The chip is encased in unbreakable glass and is about the size of a grain of rice. The procedure is done with anesthesia and is relatively pain-free. It's like putting a knitting needle under your skin. But in this case, he says getting something under your skin is a good thing. It starts like this. Here's his cat. Five years later, we found out she's back. Then somebody says, well, you know, if it's good enough for a cat, Suki, I've got mom and dad at home and dad kind of wanders off sometimes and maybe we could put in a microchip with his medical records in case something ever happens. Sounds good. And then somebody says, mm -hmm. well, if it's good enough for my cat, good enough for grandma and grandpa, mm -hmm. what about my baby? No more Amber Alerts. Never having to worry about that fear of an abducted child. And then we say, well, you know what? Maybe we should have them. And on that chip, we're going to have everything. Credit cards, driver's license. Think about it, Metro card. I'm thinking. No more wallets. Think about this. Your whole, you don't carry keys anymore. So the question I want everybody at home to ask is, is that a good idea? Because that's where we're going next. It's too sci-fi for me, I'm telling you that. It's, it's here. Much. I it's know here. it's here with pets and in a limited basis, but for humans. But your and your child. Yeah, your child. I mean, come on. People in the past might have wondered, how could this be implemented? How do you stop people from buying or selling if they don't have a mark? But we see now the technology developing that would make it very easy for no one to be able to buy or sell without having this mark. And guess what? Most people only have like seven days of food in their house or 10 days of food in their house. So if you can't buy or sell, you're going to be in a world of hurt. And basically the Bible says there's also going to be a law that says if you won't worship the Antichrist, you'll be killed. Okay, the, you know, it's, he, this guy's great. He's doing a lot of great things. He's bringing people together. Only one catch, get on board or be put to death.
when you hear about that, when you look at that, you probably say, well, in that case, I mean, I guess we're all going to die, you know, that, that are believers, I mean, those that believe on Christ. I guess we're all going to be beheaded. And the Bible talks about us being beheaded. We're all going to be beheaded, but here's the thing. If this were allowed to continue, yeah, you're right, all believers would be killed. Because think about it. Look at the technology. Look at the surveillance cameras that are going up everywhere. The satellites. Now, they, now the police are using drones with cameras to fly around and spy on you. Have you seen that? Surveillance drones. You have them, list, now they're installing microphones at street corners where they can listen in to what you're saying. And it's like the, the dystopic novel, 1984. That's what, the way our country is going to where it's a total surveillance society. Used to be you just got on an airplane. Now you gotta be molested by the TSA. Now you gotta go through a naked body scanner. Now you gotta be scanned. You gotta be patted down. You've got to have ID with you at all times. And police are constantly, where's your ID? There are your papers. Your papers are not in order. You know, and that's the country that, are, that we're living in now. And so what I'm saying is that this is gonna to continue to the point where it's gonna be really hard to escape this prison planet. But let me say this, we will not all be killed. Many will be killed, don't get me wrong. Many Christians will be beheaded and killed for the cause of Christ. But I'll say this, we will not all be killed because this will be cut short. And the Bible says, except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, they shall be shortened. And the Bible says that in the midst of this, Jesus Christ will return. Remember we talked earlier about the second coming of Christ. He will return just when they think they've defeated Christianity, they've got their global government, they've got their one world government with Satan at its head. Jesus Christ comes in the clouds and that's when the rapture takes place. And that's when he begins to pour out his wrath on this earth. And you can read about it in Revelation. He's going to be turning water into blood. He's going to be scorching the, the trees and grass. He's going to be sending these locusts from hell that are going to be stinging people with tails like scorpions. You know, if you've read the book of Revelation, if you haven't read it, I would strongly recommend it. And don't read the, the NIV, you know, read the King James Version, okay? If you're going to take the time to read it, why don't you read the, the real thing, okay? Accept no imitation. Look at uh, chapter 13, verse 1. I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power, and his seat, and great authority. So this beast that's described, the Bible says the dragon is the one who gave him his power, and gave him his seat, and gave him his authority. Look at verse three. And I saw one of his heads, as it were, wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed. And all the world wondered after the beast, and they worshiped the dragon, which gave power unto the beast. And they worshiped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? And there was given unto him a mouth, speaking great things and blasphemies, and power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. Now, does forty and two months kind of ring a bell with time and times at half a time? and 1260 days. See how these things all kind of tie in? He says in verse six, and he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. Watch this, verse seven, here's the key. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints. Now, didn't we see in chapter 12, verse 17, the dragon's goal was to make war with those who believe in Christ and keep the commandments of God. Here he says, it was given unto him to make war with the saints. Watch this, to overcome them. Who's gonna win in this war between the saints and the devil on this earth? The devil. He said he's gonna make war with the saints and overcome them. According to Revelation 13, the Antichrist's goal is to make war with the saints. So he doesn't want Christians to take the mark of the beast to avoid persecution. He wants every Christian dead. You say, well, that's depressing. Well, just read to the end of the book and you'll see what happens. You know, you'll see who wins in the end, okay? This is just a temporary setback in chapter 13, okay? But he says in verse 7, it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them, and power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations, and all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb, slain from the foundation of the world. So this man that's called the beast, this man who has power over all nations, all kindreds, all tongues, 
His goal is to make war with the saints. And the Bible says that everyone on the earth will worship him. Wait a minute. No, it doesn't. It says everyone on the earth will worship him whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. So let me ask you this. Are those whose names in the book of life, are they worshiping him? No. Well, the Bible says he'll be so believable and so smooth that he would deceive the elect if it were possible. But God will not allow any of those that are saved to be deceived by this guy. So everybody who's truly saved, even those who've been sucked into like a pre-trib rapture, when they start seeing it happen, they'll be like, you know, or hopefully when they see this documentary, they'll be like, oh, you know, they'll realize, wait a minute, this is happening. You know, this is the Antichrist. I, I can't take this thing in my hand. I shouldn't worship this guy. This isn't really Christ. So anybody who won't worship him is going to be killed. And anyone who won't worship him can't buy or sell. You're not just going to go to Walgreens and get the mark of the beast. It's not going to be something where you just show up at the post office. Okay, you know, can I get my chip so that I can buy or sell? No, the Bible's clear. You must worship the Antichrist in order to receive this chip. Now, even many decades ago, you had lie detectors. Now they're developing brain scan type technologies. I believe that probably in order to get the mark of the beast, you're going to have to worship the Antichrist and, and pledge allegiance unto the Antichrist and he'll know if you're telling the truth.